Here's a geography question for you. See if you can guess which one of these places in Utah are not cities. Tickaboo, West Weber, Juab, Gunlock, Lake Point, Sevier, Croydon, or Mount Carmel? The answer? None of them. While every one of them is a community here in the state, they are not incorporated as cities. They are just places where people live within a county. So what makes a city a city and a county a county? Well, it has to do more with function than title. A city is a municipal corporation chartered by the state to people wishing to govern themselves in a similar fashion to a private company. A county, on the other hand, is an administrative subdivision of the state and is not created by the citizens who live there. Simply put, a county is organized by the state to help it manage state affairs, while cities are organized by a community to manage theirs. Cities are allowed for in the Utah State Constitution, but only Utah's 27 original counties were specifically mentioned by name in that document. Counties were used to allocate census-related assignments. They helped define the district court boundaries, state legislative and senatorial districts, and so on. Today, they are generally charged with the task of helping the state protect the health, safety, and welfare of you and me. Counties manage elections, issue marriage licenses, run health departments, keep property records, make sure the surveying grid is correct and intact, and provide safe passage from one city to the next via county roads. They provide the chief law enforcement function in the county and prosecute crime on behalf of the citizens. In essence, a county's primary function is to administer state law at a local level. Cities, on the other hand, are defined by the identity and desires of a group of people with common interests who live near each other. Cities are created when communities petition the state by ballot for a charter to create a municipal corporation to basically govern themselves. Once granted, cities then are given these four superpowers of governance. Structural, the power to choose the form of government they want. Functional, the broad power to create rules of self-governance, ordinances. Fiscal, the authority to determine the mix of revenue they will create to serve the community. They do this through charging tax rates and fees, along with borrowing and bonding. And finally, personnel. Cities have the authority to set employment rules, payment rates, employment conditions, and so on. The areas of governments are up to the city, as long as they are in compliance with the state laws and the Constitution. Many people think that when a city is created, it's added a new layer of government and increasing taxes. While it does create a new government, it is not necessarily a new layer. Rather, it's a new route between the citizen and the state. When a city is created, they, not the county, start to provide services and oversight of basic health, safety, and welfare needs of that community. At the same time, the county ceases to do so. The city is now responsible for policing, fire protection, street maintenance, overseeing growth and development through planning and code enforcement. The county no longer has that obligation, unless, of course, they contract the city to do it for a fee. When the county stops providing that service, the taxes they collect for those services no longer go to the county. They are now placed with the city. So in essence, taxes don't increase, they just end up in the city vault instead of the county vault. The existence of a city does create a number of other questions, but those are for Chad and his guests to answer when we come back to the county seat. I'm Rhea Rossi Booth.